Alright, let's look at uh, some of the scientific applications that we can use the um, IEC fusion neutron source for. So first, uh, we're going to look at uh, two different effects. One is inelastic neutron scattering, and, and the other is neutron activation analysis. So I have the uh, GR135 plus uh, radio uh, isotope ID unit. This has a sodium iodide uh, simulation detector in here, which acts as an X-ray or gamma-ray spectrometer. So I'm going to place this in close proximity to the uh, neutron source. And between this and the IEC system, there is an eighth of an inch of lead, and that'll help screen out any residual uh, X-ray bremsstrahlung from the electrons colliding with the vacuum vessel shell. The, the amount of x-rays that come out is negligible, but this is a extremely sensitive detector, so it will pick up uh, some of that those higher energy Bremsstrahlung x-rays, which are not uh, shielded by the eighth inch stainless steel shell, so an additional eighth of an inch of lead will uh, reduce that by about a factor of three as well. Then we take some stainless uh, steel bar stock, and I'm going to place it next to the uh, GR135 plus. Now in this case the neutrons will come through the lead and strike the stainless steel and that will generate uh, scattering gamma rays which will be picked up by the GR135 plus. The other thing to look at is neutron activation analysis. I have a piece of indium foil here. I'm going to place that on top of the moderator for the neutron detector tube um, and sandwich that between an additional high-density polyethylene um, rod. So that should moderate some of those neutrons for neutron capture. So now I'm going to turn on the IEC source and put the GR135 plus into identify mode and this will start integrating that uh, X-ray and gamma ray spectrum. Now after, this is going to uh, integrate that for 200 seconds, so we're just going to keep it running for that time. Now after that time, I'm going to also measure, while that is processing the data, I'm going to measure the uh, X-ray emission, or gamma ray emission from the indium foil. Right now I have a model, a little model 18, set up with a little 44-9 probe. The background counts on this is around 50 counts per minute. So we'll see what that indium foil produces. Alright, looking at the timer, it's around 50 seconds in. So let me take the camera and look here. Now here, we're seeing is some of that Bramstrahlung spectrum on the very low end of the detector and it's just past 70 seconds and it's integrating up all the way to from around 10 kV to 3 MeV. The indium foil is placed in between this HDP rod and this HDP moderator and the system is running. So we have that uh, nice uh, star mode, star mode plasma, and right now since the system is pretty well conditioned, I think you can get a little more out of it. It's producing around 1.5 e to the 6 neutrons per second. Let me see if I can bring that up a little bit by increasing the pressure. So it's holding in that general range. At 1.5 e to the 6. Okay, so... Decrease that pressure a little bit. Hundred and fifty seconds.
Working on that insulator. So I'm just going to shut it down. But let's see if we have any good data. So, having a look at the indium foil. Not seeing much, but let's have a look at. What we have on the GR135 plus. So likely not enough neutron flux or time to activate that foil to a measurable amount. Um, but let's have a look at peak analysis. That's me analyzing spectrum. There's a bunch of peaks that detected and it has one at around 864 and that's pretty close around the 840 kV uh, peak for neutron inelastic scattering off of iron 54 so let's have a look at what that spectrum looks like. And zoom 4x. And there is that peak right there. So that should be the inelastic neutron scattering peak at around 840 from the from iron 54, or it could also be inelastic neutron scattering from the aluminum frame. So there's some basic analysis which can be done with even a uh, modest amount of neutron flux.